I'm just playing. Hey everybody, how's it going? It has been a while. I've been up to my normal crazy weirdness doing things. But you know what? Today isn't about me and what I've been doing. That'll be for another video some other day. Now, most everybody knows that I like to rock out. <laughs> And I also really like my symphonic journeys. A few weeks ago, I attended a performance of a piece by Korngold at the Phoenix Symphony. It featured a violinist by the name of Stephen Meckel. Now, Phoenix Symphony, if you're watching, don't sue me quite yet. I happened to see somebody taking a bootleg video of a portion of the performance, and I was able to acquire it, and I am using it here. Anyway, it was a great performance by the Phoenix Symphony and by Steven. Now, for those of you who don't know who Steven Meckel is, he is the first chair violin or the concert master of the Phoenix Symphony. What that means is basically he runs the orchestra. Now, I'm not always sure what to call Steven. He's more of a rock star in my book, but I'm sure that they have something like violin virtuoso. There you go. That's the word for it. Steven's a really interesting character. He's been studying violin since the age of four. He was in the Vienna Boys Choir, and he has spent his entire life traveling the world and performing on his violin. Steven and I spend a lot of time hanging out, chatting, usually about music and creativity, direction, drive, uh, motivation and passion. And we've been talking about doing a video for a long time. Not having exactly developed the direction that Steven wants to take any of the videos, I figured that we would just fire one up, start it and see what happens. Hey Steven. Hey, how's it going? Good. Coming you, want, up? you want to have a drink? Seriously, of course I do. <laughs> hey, you want gin and tonics? Yes, I do. <laughs> of course. Okay. Let's do this. There you go. Awesome. <laughs> 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 I've got to break in for just a second. From this point forward, we're going to experience a few technical difficulties. Focus issues, anyone? Shame on me, and I'm sure it'll happen again sometime. Now, you may wonder why I continued to put in the effort and the time, edit this down, and release it. Well, we had a lot of fun, and Steven's really great. So, check it out. So, you know, I'm really excited to sit with you today. And I assumed, because you only play one or two shows a night, that you have, like all the time in the world because you're just hanging out and not doing anything right sure <laughs> yeah that seems to be popular belief <laughs> anytime i get home I'm, I'm always preparing something i've either got my own concerts or i've got stuff to prepare for the orchestra yeah you know i brought that up just because we've joked about it in the oh i know listen or... even look, when i was working in germany you know they used to say oh you work for the theater what do you do during the day i was like i <laughs> You can't say you've learned it and then you don't have to do anything again. If you want to keep running those marathons, you have to keep training. It'll be like that till 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 I decide to not play anymore. Because the last thing is I want to sound I don't want to sound bad. What was it about three weeks ago now when you did that corn gold performance? Yeah. And I know that we spoke at length about how you know driven and passionate and motivated you were about that and, and how it really, you know, it, it seemed to blossom with creativity for you. Oh my gosh. Tell me a little bit about that. Well, I mean, it's a, that terribly a, interesting. That was such a journey for me. I mean, first of all, um, anytime you learn a new piece, it's a, it's a whole, it's a lot of work. Yeah, what is that process? Where do you, where do you start? I mean, do you start by literally buying the music or have you heard the piece or what's the deal? Well, yeah, it sort of, it sort of depends. Most of the time nowadays you've heard the piece. As a, as concertmaster in the orchestra, I had accompanied the Corn Gold Concerto with uh, a couple different soloists actually and that's when I first mm. came across the piece. So it's been on my to-do list for a long time. It's an incredibly difficult piece and, and, it, and it's one that once you're once you're uh, in the the job as concertmaster of an orchestra, y your schedule is unfortunately too busy to just oh learn something on the side. So the fact that that Tito, our music director, was like, "Yeah, you can do Cornwall with us," <laughs> I was like, "Oh my god, okay, I'll I'll get started on it now." Process is then, yeah, it's buying the music, it's 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 starting it's starting to figure out what you want to do with the piece, and then believe it or not, it's actually. 
I have to stop listening to recordings mm. so that I don't actually try just copy things I like. Now, That's when like, you say copy things you like, explain to me a little bit about how notes on the page can be interpreted a little bit differently, oh. and how does that drive your interest and passion in the things that but Make that's you want to run after. Oh, cool. That's a, that's actually really interesting because depending on the composer, that can vary. There are certain composers where, uh, like Korngold, for example, which it, this late romantic, we, we call, we, we, we identify the period of his writing as late romantic. You know, if you went over to Europe in the 30s, it was, it, the music was so abstract, like the art, it was going crazy, and he was still writing late romantic music, which allowed for a lot of freedom in terms of expression. Now, within the, written, within the music. Writ written music. Now, of course, Korngold is very, very accurate. I, I would say composers like that, uh, you know, would, that would qualify as that, you know, very, very romantic would be, would be um, uh, even people like Mahler, people like Tchaikovsky, where you really have some freedom to really in put in your own sense. Like a style? Uh, uh, totally. Yeah, it's like style. listening to... It's like listening to uh, I Did It My Way with five different artists. Where, where it differs is that you don't actually change the notes. So it's not within like the notes that are on the page. That doesn't, you don't, that is not part of the artistic freedom uh, in, in, in classical music. You know that I have, um, I have a real affinity for, uh, for Prokofiev. Uh -huh. I, I love it. Where, where does he fall on that scale? I mean, are you, I would assume you have to be like on that thing. Oh, with Prokofiev. There's no movements. Prokofiev is so, um, so exact and, and his music, I mean, that is, that is an example of, of things that were first written in the, you know, in the, in 60s and it's its own style entirely. A very much ballet, very, very organized and very rhythmic. So there is much less opportunity. Whereas if you're listening to Korngold, now the Violin Concerto was written based on a couple of his old films, Another Dawn and, and uh, uh, Anthony Adverse. And, and I mean, I just watched a, a Seahawk from the 1930s. I mean, that he wrote a score to, he wrote the score to Seahawk and you listen to it and it's just this like, it's incredible. I mean, I love the, that incredible romance of that type of music. I feel like my sound, my playing, my personality lends itself to that type of music. So getting back a little bit to that creativity and whatnot, uh, or the passion and creativity, what are those in particular things that you attach and identify with that like, kind of take that piece of music to the next level for you for as an me, artist? Wow. As people, we're very much driven by intervals. Um, and whether or not you know it, there are certain intervals that evoke certain emotions. And in fact, there are certain chord progressions that do that. Da -dee -da. There's a reason we identify with these intervals mm -hmm. because it evokes, it, 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 we resonate on those levels. And the more romantic the music, the more these gestures, the more these intervals play a bigger role. When you get to this romantic music, you're listening to this incredible lushness, this incredible density, and also instruments. So the orchestra for Cornwall is huge. Yeah, how many people were in that orchestra? It was over a hundred that night. Yeah, no, Korngold is a huge orchestration. That was the style. That's what was. That's that's what what Debussy wanted. That's what these these orchestras. If you go back to Mozart's time, the orchestras were much smaller, and so that that color palette is also what kind of is, inspires me to be to 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 play this type of music. And see, that's really interesting. It kind of goes back to this concert master thing. How, how do you wrestle a hundred plus creative artists that are insane musicians? I don't know, Stephen. How do you wrestle oh. over a hundred plus <laughs> creative artistic musicians? Well, I mean, for sure, for sure, an, an orchestra and going into the training to become an orchestral musician certainly has aspects of of. Um, Let's see. How would I say this? You, there is a specific type of training, especially for string players. A really dear friend of mine, he said, "Oh, I, one thing I've learned as, as as principal cellist of a major orchestra is keep your musical opinions to yourself." Hopefully, we're going to be able to follow the story of this next piece that he's going to work on. I believe it's by a composer named Britton. I'd like to segue into that because there's a lot of passion and creativity that's being. Uh, that's driving that project as well. Um, but like it goes way, way, way to the very beginning. 
So, hey Stephen, how far back, how far back to that beginning do we really go with this new piece? Wow, well, Britain, this is a really interesting story because I'm, I'm a huge Anglophile, so I love Elgar's music. I've, I've always loved, I have an entire library of Elgar's books. I have a stack of his scores. So, and Britain being an English composer, then quasi next generation of English composer um, after Elgar, so we're talking, you know, mid, mid 20th century, um, always was on my radar. All of a sudden, I would get these texts from conductor friends of mine. Oh, Stephen, I'm, I'm conducting the Britain Violin Concerto. This would be such a great piece for you, such a great piece for you. And I'm like, oh, wonderful, wonderful. And I was like, okay, file it away. I got asked to do it next year. They were like, hey, Stephen, how about the Britain? I was like, absolutely. At that point, I had not even heard the piece. <laughs> I was like, yes, uh, of course. That's I, what we I, were waiting for. I, I love the Britain. I was like, sure. And it was like, and then, and then they were like, okay, it'll be March next year. I was like, perfect, great. Then I get, I get, I, I, I come back from. I went down to rehearse with my pianist in Tucson. I, I got back and I was so exhausted, just in the middle of a concert week, and I got I get this little email. So, Stephen, would you be okay with doing that in November? So, so I got back from 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 concerts this week, and I ordered the music, and I I have in the meanwhile meantime listened to it, and have totally for real fallen in love with the piece not just in my mind so it's it it is <laughs> you have heard it since i spoke <laughs> I do, with you last I do actually now know that i really do yes want to do it and i see i do kind of hear my 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 sound and my 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 what i what I, the aesthetic that i really like this piece has the the edginess that i like in music that that you would be drawn to as a prokofiev fan yeah. and it has that kind of but that incredible lush english music thing <laughs> whatever that is you know music music certainly reacted to what was going on uh politically so so as you move through the 20th century music got a little bit more severe uh especially in europe i mean responding to world war one world war two elgar lived through world war one um he refused to change his style of writing. Um, it became very unpopular. It was it was it was it was J.R.R. Tolkien. He was talking about the Industrial Revolution yes. with the, with uh, you know the Shire being the England that was being lost. So English music has this incredible um, melancholy to it in a way sometimes, or or at least a sentimentality that I find very. Uh, I, I find it very intriguing and I find it very something very beautiful that I like to share with people too. So here's the deal. You can see this can go on and on and on. I'm going to ask Stephen to take us out with a piece of music. Now I know that he gets paid like $237.50 a minute to perform. <laughs> it's something insane like that. I'm, I'm sure of it. it it's got to be. Anyway, uh, let's see if he'll take us out with something and... Um, Well, hey, everybody, there you go. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope there's some interest to uh, do this again with Steven. Let us know. We'll take it from there. <laughs> <laughs>